Hello, my name is Michael Salmon, and welcome to another episode of Late to the Party. <laughs> Seems like a while since I've done one of these. Right, um, so today, I just wanted to talk about the situation that, uh, what's her name? Bianca Williams finds herself in, yeah, after her being stopped and searched last weekend, I think it was now, so yeah, it was about five days ago. And um, the police have kind of like made an apology statement and have come out there. I don't know why they bother doing that, to be honest with you. But I wouldn't accept it, but you know, I'll get, I'll get into that later. And uh, I just wanted to kind of like run through my version of what I think happened and also talk about the responses that a lot of people were giving in in reaction to the whole situation themselves, yeah? And then I'm talking about the people, the comments that people were leaving underneath the story, so, so to speak. Yeah, and um, yeah, that was it really. So, let me just check my notes, yeah. So, she came on, she came on LBC and did, um, and gave her, um, her viewpoint on what happened. Yeah, and I found that, I found that um, interview quite, I would say funny, but awkward to listen to, yeah, because when I listen to what, if you listen listen to some of the things that um, Nick was trying to do, right, he was trying to, he was really, really trying hard to throw her off her game, yeah, and discredit her claim, right, in some of the tactics that he was using, and luckily she didn't fall for it because she stuck to her gun, so that to me kind of like gives the implication that she was telling truth she was just saying it how it was happening as far as she's concerned because he was really throwing these um i'll play i'll play the clips it'll make you laugh and right onto um woodfield road right i'm not familiar with that um, road it was is that that's not breaking the law you're not going the wrong way down a one-way street no you? no exactly exactly right. no, okay uh, but the traffic light was red and normally if you wait at the traffic light it's about a good 10 15 minute like 10 minute wait so we have to we then turn right sorry did, did you and you then, went through a red light did you no 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 no, no. right you, you're coming up to a red light yes we're coming up to a red light you got the light has just turned red we turned right before the red light was it uh, okay was it sort of going amberish or whatever whatever it was it going uh, yeah it was still green well no we turned right before the red the red light so it's still on green no 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 we didn't cross the cross the red light so, what happened, or what do I think that happened, yeah? And I have to say this, first of all, that this is um, just my opinion, right? And um, because I wasn't there, so it is pure speculation, yeah? But having listened to what she had to say, and then looking at the police report and how they reported it, yeah? I kind of, in my, in my head... I kind of came up with a kind of like a middle ground kind of thing where I would say that both of them are embroidering the truth. You know what I mean? Right? So, because from her account, and I'm not going to, if you want to listen to her account in full, you can go on, I'll leave a link below. From her account, yeah, she and her partner were driving, they came to a junction, the police waved them through, they turned left or whatever it is, and then they began to drive um carrying up about their business and at that point the police van that let them through turned uh, p- uh, continued to follow them from there on now at this point now this is where i would argue that the claim for uh racial profiling comes in yeah well i'll explain that a bit later right. so anyway uh they can't the, the um she continued to drive um, not she's not driving. Her partner continued to drive, going back in their business, and they were in a hurry and they were in a rush, and they came up to a set of traffic lights. And I think that this is the pivotal point, the pivotal moment. Yeah, they came to a they either came up to a set of traffic lights or on approach to a set of traffic lights, the lights turned red. Yeah, and it's one of those set of traffic lights where if you get caught in them, you could be there for a while just to get to the other side. Yeah, and she states that. He took a shortcut, right? And what I think she meant by that is, if you're a driver 
and you're a competent driver and you know the area really, really well and you've been driving an area for, let's say, years and years and years or whatever, yeah? everyone, know, everyone has their workaround or little workarounds or shortcuts or jitties or whatever you want to call it in order to beat them set of lives. So it's just a matter of, okay, um, the lights have gone red. Oh, shit, you know what? If I bust this right here and then I go down there a bit, jump over the main road that goes across or even approach on that main road that goes across and then turn right back onto the road that I'm already on, you can beat that light. You know what I mean? Everyone has one of those, yeah? So what's happened now is that the guys, the driver, her partner, is driving up behind another car or something like that. The lights have turned re- uh, red or the lights were red and he's decided in a split moment to say, you know what, sorry, I'm going to take the shortcut. I'm going to bust this move, yeah? But what I think it is, is that the move, like for most people in those cases, the move, he was not bang on that right turn. So it would have been a matter of him having to pull out go forward maybe a car length, half a car length, maybe even two, and then turn right. You know what I mean? So he's driving along, right? He's like, oh shit, decided, oh no, you know what, I'm gonna bust this right here. And then, but there's a car in front of him, right? And he's gonna have to kind of like go round and then bust a right, yeah? Now that is an illegal move, yeah? And the police behind him would have seen that, yeah? So. I'm just, uh, my, I would say that the police were totally within their right to pull him up for that, yeah? But like I said, there's some racial profiling going on there, yeah? And the racial profiling is what I consider led to the way that they dealt with the matter once they'd, once um, Williams had pulled up and stopped, excuse the sirens. Because when they decided I've been pulled up quite a few times, yeah. And what I do know is that when the police decide to do a check on you, a run down, what they normally do is they type it in the system, yeah. And they wait for the response to come back. And if you're all clear, you got your insurance, you got your MOT, the car, da 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 da, they just green light you and go about their business, right? But sometimes that might take a little bit of while to come through. And that's why they end up following you for a little piece, isn't it? Yeah. And what it is, is in between them waiting for the information, to, in between the police waiting for the information to come back, right? This guy's bust that right, right move, that right hand, t- that right turn, yeah? In that illegal way, right? And like I said, with the racial profiling now, what it is, is that because they were black, yeah? A lot of baggage comes with that, yeah? It's, mm, they could be selling drugs, ooh. There could be weapons in there. Ooh, the car's stolen. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean, yeah? So when the police have seen that the, the driver pull that right-hand turn, yeah, and go around the car, rather than just see it as a stupid move and arrest, or not arrest them, but pull them up later on for doing that move, the police have, um, what I would say, uh, assumed or projected it to themselves that he's now running because obviously they've followed him for a while he's come up to these lights and then he's bust this move and it to them they've just seen it as he's running he's running he's getting off and that has changed the dynamic now into how they deal with Williams and her partner yeah when they finally did pull over and I just wanted to interject here with a lot of the comments uh, just kind of like talking on some of the comments that I saw people trying to throw out there. Like, oh, it couldn't be about racial profiling because the windows were tinted, yeah? And then trying to argue that win- tinted windows are illegal, blah, blah, blah. Windows have been, tinted windows have been an option on cars since 2000 and God knows when, eight, six or whatever. Most cars you can actually buy with tinted windows, the back window tinted, the two rear windows are tinted at 80%. Then you have the two front windows, uh, the driver's side and the passenger side, maybe something like 30%, and then the front one's clear. And if you listen to her, now, if you didn't know, if you haven't heard her version of the story yet, she says that the police van was approaching them and let them turn right. They gave us way. They gave way, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were in the opposite direction. 
they then, as soon as we turned right, within seconds, they then, it would be their left. They then turned left. Yeah. yeah, so obviously they could have seen into the car. So that just kind of like puts that one out of the way. Yeah. And um, what was the other one? Oh, the other one was, um, oh, why didn't they stop? When the police flashed them to pull over, why didn't they stop straight away? Now, I, I've, I've been in London for years. Well, I don't live in London yet, but I've been going to London back and forth for years. I used to be a courier. I worked down there. Yeah. And... Any road, any side street that comes off a main road is going to be one of those side streets or one of those roads where it's one lane only. Yeah, it's got cars on this side, cars on that side, and it's going to be narrow. So it stands to reason that they're going to find somewhere decent to pull up. Yeah, so they could, they, so it could be just a case of there wasn't nowhere proper that they could pull off and not block the whole road. So it, 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 no, so it could have been half a mile, a quarter of a mile down the road a little bit. Yeah. Or they were going in the or they just continued to go in the direction that they were going in until they found somewhere safe enough to pull up. Yeah, so put that out of your mind. Right. So anyway, as I digressed a little bit. Right, so the police now, right? So the police now, yeah, um, have seen the move and then they've decided, right, okay, then we're gonna pull them up for it, yeah. But because again, like because they've got all this other baggage in their in in their head, drugs, uh, car theft and this, that and the other. When they've stopped, when the um, Williams is finally pulled over, what normally happens, yeah? Now, I, I'm saying this from experience. What normally happens, when you get pulled over, you normally get one cop or one police officer come out, come to your car, give you the wind down the window, say, look, mate, the reason why I pulled you over or the reason why I'm stopping you is because X, Y, Z. Yeah, is this your car? And you give them the yes sir, no sir, and you give them your formalities, yeah? And as long as your information matches what they already know about you, because they've already done checked you out, yeah? You're cool, you're cool, right? What doesn't normally happen is a bunch of them jump out of a van and, de uh, uh, and descend upon you, yeah? Throwing demands at you. And I think for me, that's where they were wrong, yeah? They weren't wrong for trying to pull them up for making that bus to sus suspect right turn. They were wrong in the approach once they'd got them there. Yeah. And like I said, that is what I would consider the racial profiling because they shouldn't have done that. Taining me under a certain section mm -hmm. um, and they're going to search the car for drugs and weapons. There was no evidence to prove any of that. So when they did pull them over, it should have just been for the suspect or the, 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 the stupid uh, right hand turn. You know what I mean? But again, that's not what happened, and obviously this is. And then we all know what happened after that. Now she she made the video and she's complained about it. And she stated it, and and it's made national news. Excuse me. But that's just my that's just my interpretation of what happened. Yeah. Now, as to the response of the people in the comments now, what I found kind of like, um, dis not disturbing, but you know, it, I had a problem with yeah is the fact that a lot of the people in the comments were insistent or were adamant that she was solely in the wrong, that she was a liar and that she should get sacked from working. She, she's a disgrace to GB yeah, because she's, not, she's an athlete in it. So, and she uh, represents Great Britain. She's a disgrace. She should, uh, she's a liar. Well, the, 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 they didn't say that she's a liar. They just say that she's in the wrong. And why? All right, and that she's pulling the race card. And why can't black people be responsible to or take accountability for their errors? And also that you know she's using the race card to exaggerate the situation to get out of it. Yeah, and all of this and all of that, right? And what I find what what bothers me about that is that. All the heat or all the responsibility is thrown upon um, Bianca, right? And nobody's questioning the police or in their, in, in, in their opinions. And this is the people who are making comments. They're all, yes, you know what I mean? She's solely responsible. There's no one saying, um, well, you know what? Did the police embroider the truth a little bit? Isn't that a possibility that the, the police, once they'd realised that they'd gone over the top and they didn't find any drugs, they didn't find any weapons, and it was just a, a woman, her, her partner, and a child in the back. Yeah, they've gone overboard, over TT. 
with the, their approach, right? So isn't isn't it isn't there a, a, a reasonable um, argument for them to have embroidered their truth by saying, well, you know what, we've seen him speed off and drive half a mile down the wrong side of the road. Isn't there a possibility that they're embroidering their truth as well? And that's why I said at the beginning of the video, yeah, I'm not saying either of them are wrong, but what I am going to say, but what I will admit to is that I feel, or I see it, not feel, I see that both of them have slightly embroidered their voice version of the event. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And the police were in the right to pull them over for making a dodgy move, but then they were not in the right for actually the way that they conducted the arrest or they conducted the, uh, the procedure once they'd actually pulled them up. And that was it really to run through. And so let me know in the comments below um, what you think happened in that situation. Or do you agree or, or do you disagree? You know what I mean? My name is Michael Salmon and I'm, this is Late to the Party. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.